What is cloud computing? You must be using services like electricity, water, broadband as per your convenience. You get charged based on what you use. The same things happens in the cloud computing, it's the delivery of computing services, servers, storage, databases, networking, software, analytics and more over the internet, which is called cloud. Companies offering these computing services are called cloud providers and there are so many. These providers charge for these services as per the usage by the client. Once you are done with the work, you can shut down the service and you won't get charged a single penny. Forrester's Cloud Prediction for 2018 The total global public cloud market will be $178 billion in 2018 up from $146 billion in 2017, and will continue to grow at a 22% compound annual growth rate. Public cloud platforms, the fastest growing segment, will generate $44 billion in 2018. AWS, Google, and Microsoft will capture 76% of all cloud platform revenue in 2018, 80% by 2020. Revenue and Market Share as per the report from RightScale, AWS leads in the cloud market. But Azure is also catching up aggressively. Amazon Web Services jumped 43% in 2017 to $17.5 billion, representing about one-tenth of Amazon's total revenue. According to FactSet, analysts are currently projecting 38% growth at AWS this year. It could pass SAP in size before the end of 2019. SAP's 2017 revenue of $26.5 billion was up 6%. Microsoft said second quarter commercial cloud revenue jumped 56% to $5.3 billion, pushing the company's full year total to $18.6 billion. Microsoft is also eyeing for $20 billion in the fiscal year 2018. Regions Both companies' clouds are made of regions. Amazon operates in 18 geographical regions. Each region has at least two or three availability zones. Total 54 availability zones. Availability zones consist of one or more data centers. So, in case of one availability zones gets failed other works as a backup. Azure operates in 50 geographical regions, available in 140 countries. They don't have the availability zones as of now. But, as per the announcement they will start launching availability zones in 2018. Compute Instances The biggest expense on the cloud is going to be on compute instances. Compute instances are basically the virtual servers where the applications run on the cloud. This service is called Amazon Elastic Compute or EC2 on AWS. This is one of the most popular services on the AWS platform. The same service is known as VMs or Virtual Machines on Microsoft Azure. They both offer over 50 instance types. Both support all the operating systems you will need, and both have thousands of image choices like Ubuntu or Windows Server images in their marketplaces. Storage AWS Storage is called Simple Storage Service, S3, and Azure's is called Blob Storage. S3 uses include web hosting, image hosting, and storage for backup system. You can tell files to be automatically backed up to cheaper storage if they aren't used frequently. You cannot do that with Azure. Database Both provides database as a service feature. It's called Amazon Relational Database RDS on AWS platform, and SQL Database on the Microsoft Azure platform. The RDS is more comprehensive, Provides six relational database engine Amazon Aurora, PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server. Whereas SQL database exclusively based on Microsoft SQL Server. Same way, for the NoSQL, AWS offers DynamoDB which is one of the popular databases on the cloud. And very similar to MongoDB and CouchDB. Microsoft offers two distinct products, DocumentDB and Table Storage. Pricing AWS bill compute time by the hour, while Azure does by the minute. The most expensive way to buy cloud computing is on demand. If you book in advance, or reserve your resources, prices drop dramatically. 
With AWS these are called reserved instances. There is even a marketplace for buying and selling compute reservations. Azure doesn't have a marketplace like this, they focus on enterprise agreements. These are negotiated individually with companies, and sales reps have been known to give big discounts for long-term commitments. Security AWS and Azure both have exceptional security on their clouds. They both know trust is an important key to bring new customers on the platform. The only real difference is that AWS has been around for longer and has a more mature ecosystem. Uptime Both AWS and Azure have the same guaranteed availability as part of their service level agreement. 99.95% uptime for compute instances 99.9% uptime for storage. Amazon still has a much better track record than Azure. 2014 downtime, hours, AWS 2.41 Azure 39.77 2015 downtime, hours, AWS 2.51 Azure 10.82.